Sometimes I get things wrong. <gasps> Yes, yes, I know, it's very shocking. You'd never think someone as perfect as myself could ever possibly make a mistake in my life. Crazy, right? Well, I like to look at the comments of my videos because I like to at least try to engage with my audience at some point. It's helped me become a better content creator, helped hone my craft, and I'd like to think as maybe at least a slightly more humble person. Kinda. And though the response to my Aquaman video has been overwhelmingly positive thus far, I feel the need to make this short-ish follow-up to that video to make an amendment. Unlike some of my peers across YouTube, I will actually admit that I'm wrong about something. Since YouTube really doesn't like good business decisions, they took out the annotations feature, so rather than just making an annotation like we used to, now we have to either make a comment and hope people see it, or make a new video and hope people see it. Thanks, YouTube, this really helps. But anyway, I got something wrong in the Aquaman video, and it's not the shark thing. I mean, I did get that wrong, but I said twice in that video that I was probably wrong about it anyway, so... But no, we're talking about the random submarine. In my video, I described the random submarine that attacked the Fewer and his comrades as being totally unexplained and out of nowhere, and I also described the motivations of the Black Men as being unexplained and out of nowhere. I was rightfully called out on this because I was wrong. Partially. Because what's funny is that the argument against my point actually brings up a host of new flaws that I didn't even think of. Now, I try my best to nail everything in my video reviews. Sometimes I get a small thing wrong, like in my Halo Reach video where I didn't realize the pack Noble Six was wearing was how he got the pistol in the beginning of the Exodus mission. Still doesn't exactly explain how he got separated from the pack or how he found it again, but it's really not a big deal. I had way bigger issues to discuss in that video than that one tiny thing. When it comes to movies, however, especially ones that aren't on DVD, yet, I have to largely resort on my memory. Aquaman is a two and a half hour movie and there's so many issues with it that it's hard to keep them all straight, and I'm pretty sure I missed a few despite how much time I poured into making that video. So it turns out the submarine was explained in an extremely flippant line in the film, and I guess I was so zoned out at that point of watching it that it just flew over my head. So basically the idea is the viewer got the help from the black men to stage a false flag operation. Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. To make the other Atlanteans get riled up about fighting the surface world. The entire mission is to take the sub, attack the Atlanteans, use it as proof that humans are evil, and use the anger it caused as a means to start a war. So it's basically the plot of Modern Warfare 2. Now I'm perfectly willing to accept that explanation, the problem is that it still doesn't make any sense. Now now, before you get your panties in a twist, just hear me out on this one. So the plan here is to get this sub to attack the Atlanteans at their meeting, right? So in that case, they kinda need to keep the sub relatively intact. So in that case, the mission was fucked from the get-go. The first shot we get is of a rifle being fired from the hip spasmodically shooting all around. It destroys some monitors and shit as well as killing people. If your goal is to use the sub to attack the Atlanteans, shouldn't you have a vested interest in trying to keep the sub intact? This is setting aside the fact that these are mercenaries, not trained naval officers. So how they would even necessarily control this sub is beyond me unless they just happen to have been in the Navy. But they have no compunction doing serious damage to the tech inside the sub. They have explosives with them them, and the dad shoots a grenade launcher twice before blowing himself up. My initial criticism, aside from just not really making any sense, was that it made no logical sense to bring explosives on a sub you're trying to commandeer because explosives and things underwater generally don't mix very well. Now it makes even less sense. Why on earth would you bring explosives on a sub you're intentionally trying to keep intact in order to complete your mission? That makes absolutely no sense at all. And as I said in my initial video, bringing them is one thing and using them is another, so again, and why are you risking shooting explosives in the sub if you want to keep the sub intact? On top of that, let's go back to some of my criticisms of this scene from the initial video, being that the torpedo bay should have detonated and the sub was sinking. So again, the dad is trapped because a torpedo is literally lying on top of him. He then takes a bomb and blows himself up. Now, it makes no sense already that he has a bomb in the first place, but especially with a torpedo laying on him, that should have obliterated half the sub. There you go. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. But no, the explosives don't go off, which makes fuck all sense. But even if we ignore that, he shot a grenade launcher at the wall and put a sizable hole in the sub. A hole that just so happens to not be indicated anywhere on the sub for the duration of this meeting scene, so... That hole, though, is literally flooding the sub. It's sinking. The final shot we get of it as Black Manta is fleeing the site is of the thing literally plummeting into the depths of the ocean. Even assuming Black Manta actually can and is controlling the sub, if the entire thing is flooded, then how would his control 
control even work? Wouldn't that fry everything in the sub? They're, you know, not supposed to get wet on the inside. And it's not like there's anyone else on board to seal the hatches. The doors are all still opened, everyone abandoned as quickly as possible. That means that the whole thing should be an underwater tomb at this point, effectively destroying everything of value in the sub. So in that case, with a torpedo bay that should have blown half the sub into oblivion, a hole that turned the sub into a militarized titanic, and with tech that was already shot by a rifle, how is this plan even able to go forward? How can Black Manta guide and direct a derelict vessel, much less shoot its torpedoes if the thing has suffered such massive damage? Full disclosure, as if this is even necessary, I know literally nothing about submarines. However, I somehow doubt that a sub with a hole in its hull that flooded the entire vessel and also had an explosive go off in the torpedo bay would still be even remotely operational. This is setting aside that we never actually see the sleight of hand of Black Manta controlling the sub remotely in the first place, unless it was the Atlanteans in the sub that managed to power it back to life, but that's never indicated in the film, so unless I see considerable evidence to the contrary, I'm ruling that explanation out. So, this plan should effectively have not even worked. Hell, it should straight up have not even gone into action because it failed as soon as it began. All this, and we still haven't even touched the biggest issue of all. The Atlanteans paid the mercenary to stage this false flag. The purpose of the false flag is to convince the ginger Atlanteans to join forces to make the fewer Ocean Master and start a war with the surface. Why in the hell would the mercenary support that? Yeah, yeah, they only care about money, but what's the money gonna be worth to them if the Atlanteans theoretically destroy the surface? I already outlined how bad of an idea that was in the initial video, so I won't discuss it more here, but if we go under the assumption that Atlantis absolutely would destroy the Earth, how would that benefit the mercenaries? What motivation do they have to do this? Are they actually so stupid that they didn't think that through? And furthermore, how and why did the mercenaries even get in contact with the Atlanteans in the first place? So in summary, a bunch of mercenaries somehow got in contact with the King of Atlantis. He convinced them to hijack a sub to stage a false flag attack in order to destroy the surface. We have to assume that the mercenaries are utterly retarded and never considered how badly that would affect them. The mercenaries fight with Aquaman destroys the sub and renders it inoperational, and yet despite the effective annihilation of the sub, somehow this plan still works despite it being flooded and suffering massive damage inside and out, which none of the other Atlanteans comment on or try to investigate whatsoever. All of which allows this stupid scenario to happen. You see, Aquaman is a movie where the more you think about it, the worse it gets. I was rightfully corrected on something I got wrong and immediately my brain tried to work out how that new information affected my judgment of the film overall. Rather than giving me a more positive view of the experience, I have now discovered a dozen more flaws that make the scenario make even less sense than it did before. The movie quite literally made more sense when I thought the sub was just a random attack. The mercenaries in Black Manta in particular actually look significantly dumber now. It turns out that I accidentally made the movie sound slightly less idiotic than it truly is. So thanks for pointing out that I got something wrong because fuck. I had no idea that the plot made even less sense than I originally thought. Since I have your attention now, I may as well give a couple announcements that I didn't think to make at the end of the video and only tacked onto the pinned comment that most of you probably didn't read in the first place. I would have liked to come back with a more positive video, but to be honest, after all the time I spent away from YouTube, my passion for creating videos has, needless to say, significantly dwindled. It's not that I outright don't like making content, it's just that I'm focused on so many more important things. I've been working far more hours, I devoted a lot of time into reading and writing, and since January I've made serious alterations to how I eat and work out. In the past two months, I've lost about 12 pounds. I'm now the best I've felt physically in my entire life, and my dedication to keep improving my physique and livelihood is a little bit more important than ranting on the internet. Of all the things that would get me to make a video again, I never would have dreamed it would be Aquaman of all things. I just really ended up hating this movie and felt that nobody was really giving it the criticism it deserves, so here we are. I don't really have any plans for future videos. It was a bit of a struggle even pushing myself to edit the Aquaman video in the first place because I would have honestly rather been doing something else. The internet pretty much absorbed my entire life since I was 14, and in the time I've been away, I've really realized how bad of a lifestyle that was. As much fun as it is to edit videos together and try to make something entertaining, I don't want to fall back into the same loop of meaningless Twitter feuds and overly edgy, angry content. My goal has always been to entertain, first and foremost, hence my abrasive attitude, but I'm in no way eager to start running my life that way again. So, I really don't have any time frame for when my next video will be, or what it'll be on, because I've just stopped 
caring about YouTube in general. Though there were no copyright claims on the Aquaman video, I have no real interest in actually monetizing it because I don't feel like it would really be worth it. I'm just focusing on the important things in my life and that just doesn't really include YouTube anymore. This will basically be a thing I come back to every now and again when I feel like it. However, there's at least some content out there that I regularly take part in. If you don't already know, I've been a part of a podcast called Every Frame of Pause, otherwise known as EFAP. It's me and my friends Mauler and Rags, a show that generally happens once a week where we talk about movies, video games, other YouTubers, conduct debates, and bring on a variety of guests, all while laughing at a host of hilarious fan-made memes. It's a constant joy to be a part of the show, and unless something like work or family related comes up, I'm pretty much always there. Live shows are conducted on Mauler's channel, and the backups go on his backup channel. You can find the links to both in the description below. Otherwise, I'm pretty much just moving along with my life. The time away has really helped me get better physically, mentally, and emotionally. I'm now closer with my family and friends, and I've been working to really achieve the things I want in life. The stress of social media is completely gone now because it's not really a part of my life anymore. Turns out that getting banned wasn't too bad after all. Who knew? I just want to thank you guys for the support I've had over the past several months. It really means more to me than any of you can imagine. So to wrap up, if you really want to see me, Rags, and Mauler laugh at nonsense memes and terrible YouTube videos, go watch EFAP. And in response to many questions I've had over the past X amount of months, Alita Battle Angel was terrible. Metro Exodus is pretty good. Apex Legends' greatest achievement was unintentionally reviving Titanfall 2. Spec Ops The Line is fucking amazing. Monster Hunter World has the worst dub job I've ever witnessed, and that's all my opinion on it because I haven't actually got too far into the game at all. Kingdom Come Deliverance is pretty. Black Ops 4 is utter garbage. The God of War series is goddamn amazing, and the fourth game was fucking incredible. The Spyro Remaster was phenomenal until I hit the third game and realized it wasn't finished, so now I'm perpetually waiting for a patch that'll fucking fix it. Glass was a reasonably okay movie until the end when M. Night just had to fuck it all up. Berserk is goddamn amazing and Puck is objectively the best boy. All You Need Is Kill is objectively one of the best manga ever. Anthropoid is literally one of the best movies I have ever seen and nobody has ever heard of it, so please for the love of God watch that movie. Snowpiercer is a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. No, The Witcher TV show will not be good, they're gonna fuck up the Wheel of Time show as well, and they're absolutely gonna fuck up the Lord of the Rings show. I encourage you not to watch the Tolkien movie because the trailer already shows they're conflating his World War One experience experiences with the Lord of the Rings, which Tolkien specifically said was not the case. Thus meaning that the filmmakers have no respect for the man or his life, so fuck that film into another dimension. The NFL sucks, but the NHL is the greatest thing ever, and you know what I mean by that. Quentin Reviews is a cuck, Annihilation is a bad movie, Arrival is also a bad movie, and Aquaman sucks. Now stop asking me things. Good night.